The Mississippi State Bulldogs are looking to do something they haven't done since Rick Stansberry was head coach. With Josh Hubbard and Cam Matthews returning for another season, can Mississippi State make the NCAA tournament for a third straight time this year? It's the Mississippi State Bulldogs season preview today on the Hoop Southbound Show. I'm just wearing a, you know, sweatshirt today and I look like crap, but apparently Maddie wanted to come on the show. Everything that you wanted to wear today, you know, because a special occasion, I'm guessing, or something, because we're going to be recording three episodes today. Is that what the plan is? Well, I had family pictures. Um, (laughs) Still a little salty about said family pictures because they told me Apollo was not allowed in them. He was going to have a little bow tie and everything, but... Um, Apollo had to stay home, so we may have to have family picture redos with just me and him. (laughs) Get him all nice and dressed up and everything. Well, all right, today we are talking about Mississippi State and not Apollo. Uh, That's a totally different dog we're talking about. (laughs) We're going to be talking about Mississippi State, the Bulldogs today. Crazy, crazy last season where they had a chance to look like they may have a run opportunity for the uh, Sweet 16, but of course, didn't quite end up that way. They're looking, they got a breakout star though from last year with Josh Hubbard, but they are missing somebody we've gotten really familiar with in Tolu Smith out of Mississippi State. It's going to be an interesting year to see exactly where the state team's at. Yeah, I think this is kind of the season that we all see if Mississippi State is one of those teams that can be a survivor and a common contender in the SEC, or if it was just kind of a fluke situation where you had all the right people in the right place. Um, But I guess we'll see this upcoming season what state has in store for us. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and flip back to what it was last year. Um, And side note on that, Chris Jans is a good coach, so I don't think that they're just (laughs) going away anytime soon. But let's go ahead and flip the clock back to last year and do a recap of where we were when we left off in April with Mississippi State. Yeah, so last season, Mississippi State shocked a lot of people. They went 21-14 and and 8-10 and in conference play, finished ninth in the SEC, made the semifinals in the SEC tournament, and they made the NCAA tournament, but unfortunately were eliminated by Michigan State in that first round. That was their first time making back-to-back NCAA tournaments since 2009. You know, obviously they had a fantastic year. They finished 34th in Ken Palm, and that was their best finish in Ken Palm since 2019. It was a really promising year, really promising year, and everything went really great. We kept talking up. Uh, Mississippi State's front court, and they really showed out at times. And Tolu Smith, uh, in combination with Cam Matthews and what they had, DJ Jeffries, all what that team had put together for Mississippi State last year was really good. And then Josh Hubbard being an absolute, I wouldn't say a surprise, surprise, but like he was playing like one of the best freshmen in the SEC last year, and he was nowhere close if you on anybody's sight to being one of the best fre- 15 freshmen coming into the SEC. He was a surprise for sure. And this year, they're going to be talking about how they're going to be building a team around him and that's going to be part of this conversation so the storylines this year for mississippi state as i was mentioning in the intro first three peat for the ncaa tournament since rick stansbury can it happen for mississippi state it's been a long time coming uh if they could get back for a third straight trip it'd be one of their high marks in program history additionally this team's got to find an identity without tote luke smith now uh in the christians era they've got a player to build a team around and that's josh hubbard we're going to be seeing how they take that this year and then that's going to be also going into progressing to the next step for this team as a program and that is a consistent appearing team uh in the ncaa tournament and one that's won a tournament game. This team hasn't won an NCAA tournament game since 2008. Can they get that done this season as well? Uh, Mississippi State was both in your and mine's under the radar. Potential felt like this team wasn't getting talked up enough um, about what they have on this team. And then additionally, as we mentioned in the Ole Miss preview, the Egg Bowl basketball. It feels like we're going to an all-time great level right now with Chris Beard and Chris Jans uh, being in the places they are, getting these teams going where they're going. We could be seeing some of the best basketball in this rivalry, in the history of this rivalry right now. Um, very, very good opportunities right now between these two teams and two teams that are battling for NCAA tournament spots at seeding, along with just the bragging rights for this state as well. So those are some of the storylines we're looking at this year. It's exciting. It's going to be a fun year of basketball for Mississippi State. But 
a lot of people just don't know what this team's going to look like without Tolu Smith. Definitely. But fortunately, we do have some returning players that made a lot of noise last season. Big one in my mind here. You mentioned him a couple different times in the intro. And as we were kind of going going through the, the highlights of the season, Josh Hubbard. I mean, I was watching the pregame show for the football game on Saturday, and someone said Josh Hubbard was one of the best athletes to go to school at State. Now, if everyone watching is kept up, they know that's definitely in the realm of possibilities. Hubbard had a phenomenal freshman season, racking up 598 points. As a freshman, that's insane. That's great numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Average 17.1 points per game, 2.2 rebounds, and shot 38.5% from the field. And 35.5% from three, just underneath that kind of magic number we talk about at 36. State fans should be absolutely thrilled to have this rising star back in their lineup. He is the lowest classman on the top 10 returners uh, and leading scorers in the SEC this season. That's a list that includes players like Mark Sears, uh, Tremont Mark, who transferred to Texas this season, and other players who were putting up monster numbers. Wade Taylor on that list as well. And here's Josh Hubbard, the only sophomore, the only underclassman on the list. Uh, really, really impressive that he's the only one to make that list this season. Really special breakout season for Josh Hubbard last year. It was something that you just don't see every day for someone who was only a three-star and then made everyone doubt that ranking afterwards and said, no, 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 I'm a lot better than what your website says. And he had a great season last year. Uh, let's talk about another return of this team, and that's Cam Matthews. Uh, he put up 9.4 points per game and got close to about seven rebounds a night for Mississippi State last year in that front court. Um, but this is going to be a year where he has the opportunity to kind of break out from where he was. Like I said, DJ Jeffries is gone off this team. Uh, Jeffries averaged 6.5 and 5.6 rebounds per game there's gonna be a lot more minutes available for cam matthews and he was stepping up as that season went on last year for mississippi state um and the, as i mentioned there's some openings in that front court i think he's an absolute huge key piece for this mississippi state team and their success going into this season and then another player i want to talk about and this is very important, is that you got to get some help in that backcourt for Josh Hubbard when we build this team around him. Uh, very good guard at a Penn State, and that's Kanye Clary. Now, there were some dismissed, he got dismissed from the Penn State program last year. Reasons were undisclosed why he left, but Chris Jans ended up taking him in the portal this season. For Clary, he's a good three-point shooter, and that's going to help State a lot because this team, when we get into the numbers here in a little bit, is not the most impressive shooting team in the SEC by any means. So Kanye Clary is going to be very important for Mississippi State this season. He averaged 16.7 points per game and shot at 37.7% from three. However, when you look at those numbers, he was one of the players who shot under 100 three-pointer, uh, made one, under 100 three-point attempts last season. So not a high-volume shooter. You compare that to Josh Hubbard, who shot 304 last season. It's going to not quite be the same thing, but you've got an accurate shooter who's coming in. Additionally, this is also a player who converts about eight out of 10, a little bit over that from the free throw line when he gets fouled. Anytime I see someone shoot 80% from the free throw line, I just light up and smile about that. And I know so do you, Maddie. <laughs> My favorite statistic, what can I say? I bet to say it's free points. Get to get those free, free points for sure. Um, all right, so we need to talk about this roster. Now, last year we were big on Mississippi State's front court. Both of us were. I had Mississippi State's front court as my number one front court coming into the season, and it's because they had Tolu Smith, who we knew who he was, and they added depth to this thing to try to help, and it outperformed Auburn at times, um, you know, who had Janai Broom and other players. This year, it's going to be a little bit of a different look, but we're really going to be questioning where that number five production is going to be coming from this year. Um, you've got two really good chancer, uh, transfers out of uh, Michael Nowako, and also you've got Jeremy Formina as well coming from Rhode Island. The problem with these guys is that they saw very little minutes uh, at their previous school. So there's a lot of questions about if they're going to be able to perform. And then you got Guy Chol as well uh, returning at 6'11". Um, very limited minutes for Chol last season. He only played a grand total of 6.4 per game last year. This is his opportunity to break out and show who he is this season. We had high hopes for him, especially in that injury uh, time period at the beginning of last season where Tolo Smith was out. We've got to figure, we've got to find out who's going to be the guy for Mississippi State in this front court this season. Maddie, when you look at this roster, what else stands out to you? 
You know, looking over this roster, I mean, I think, like you said, kind of our, our big concern there is probably going to be in the front court just because it's unknown. We don't really know what direction they're going in. But also looking over the backcourt, like we've got our staple guy there um, in Josh Hubbard. You're getting some backup with Kanye Clary, but I still feel like um, not necessarily the depth piece, but kind of figuring out how all of these new players to the team are going to be able to work together. Um, so I think it, I think the most important thing is going to be building up that chemistry early in the non-conference schedule where you don't have a lot of, you know, super hard opponents to face up against to figure that out then. Because once you get into SEC play, if you don't know who your guy is going to be, they're going to be in a rough spot. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely – if you don't figure out who your guy's going to be, you're going to be in a rough spot. But you've also got on this roster, and this is something that boosts a little bit of confidence for me. If you've got players who have played at the SEC level on this team, not just on your returners from Mississippi State. I'm talking about R.J. Melendez, uh, who put up 9.6 points a game for Georgia last year. And then Riley Kugel, who initially transferred to Kansas, ends up going to Mississippi State uh, on the second time around in the transfer portal, 9.2 points per game and 3.5 rebounds a night for Riley Kugel. Now, here's the thing with Riley Kugel. He's talented enough to be an NBA draft pick. And I really do think if he has a really good season, he can make a case for himself to be in that second round this season. So he's super talented as well. And he's played in this conference. He knows what it takes to win around here. And when a school like Kansas wants to get you, um, you're probably a pretty good basketball player. I'm just going to throw that out there as well. <laughs> Definitely two huge names that Mississippi State got in this offseason. Like I said, the you know experience that they have being from other SEC schools is going to be phenomenal. Um, and hopefully that leads toward you know being in one of the better basketball conferences, that higher basketball IQ being able to make those things click a little faster. So definitely gives you a little bit more hope on that side of things. Okay, let's do. Let's go ahead and turn over to the indexes here. Uh, for you Mississippi State fans who may have not watched some of the other episodes and the previews, I'll explain what's going on here. We're just taking a look at some of the items and things that people are looking at with, to build a good roster in this transfer portal area era and how high a potential a team you are. So let's go ahead and look at the roster first. Now, this is based on Evan Mia's research that he conducted this offseason over on his website, and we're looking at three items that he pointed out. Talent, 50% playing time retention, and second-year players on this team. For Mississippi State, they're doing pretty well uh, when it comes to how they've brought talent in this uh, last season. They had the number 48 recruiting class the year before they were number 36. And this transfer class this season is number 42 in the country. So they're hanging right in there to be about like in the top 40 somewhere in talent around that number, uh, getting team, this team put together. So they were just under a hundred minutes returned per, or, uh, per game on this team. And they did that between six players. Of course, you got Josh Hubbard, Cam Matthews, Kishan Murphy, Sean Jones, Guy Chol, and Adrian Myers all coming back for Mississippi State this season. So let's go ahead and look at the potential for this team. This is what some of the items that we used on our big board last season. This is what a lot of people in Vegas used to make odds and along with Kim Palm and some other factors that they look at for teams who they think are going to make a deep run in March. And there's three items we're looking at for here. First, you're looking for your top three scorers to be upperclassmen. At least two of them need to be upperclassmen for Mississippi State. Josh Hubbard, right now from last season, based on those numbers, looks like your leading scorer. He's only a sophomore, so I would expect him to be here again. So these other two need to be there. Uh, Kanye Clary averaged 16.7 points per game. Claudel Harris, 13.7 points per game. He's another important guy who was a really good shooter uh, there in Harris. Uh, Harris last season ended up shooting 238 three-point attempts last season. Another high-volume three-point shooter like Josh Hubbard. It's going to be interesting to see who's here. I think guys like Cam Matthews could also break into this list. So it's not 100% sure who it is, but there's plenty of upperclassmen here to accompany Josh Hubbard and this team that they're trying to build around him. When you look at the three-point shooting, though, you want a team that's shooting 36% from uh, from deep. This is where State's a little bit concerned to me, and this is going to be the most limiting factor on their potential. 33.1% from deep last season, just a hair off that. And like I mentioned, not a lot of high-volume guys. You've only got... With Grant, you've only got four players who attempted more than 100 three-point attempts last season on this team. So you're going to have to figure out where that shooting is going to go, and you've got to figure out 
how to be more effective from three and be very efficient from there and to up that number just a little bit more to crack through that potential. And then finally, you want to be a top 40 Kim Palm defense. This is where I got some faith in state right here. They've been a good defensive team for the last couple of years. Chris Giants does a really good job there. They were 95.9 adjusted defense in Kim Palm last year, which was a top 25 defense in the country. I expect them to be there again. However, I will mention losing Tolu Smith does lose a little bit of rim protection. So we're going to have to find out if they're going to be as good at that five spot in that rim protection this season. That's going to be part of the concern, but I think they should still have a very solid defense for this season. Yeah, I mean, definitely looks promising. Hopefully some of those pieces that have come in and some of those pieces that were more depth pieces can progress a little bit this season and maybe add up some additional production since losing Tolu Smith. But as always, the numbers aren't going to be able to tell us everything. We actually got to play some basketball. Gotta so play. go to the schedule. Mississippi State will open the season against West Georgia, Georgia State, and Southeastern Louisiana. Then they'll head to South Haven to face Utah in the Mid-South Showdown. Yeah, Utah is a team that's not getting a ton of hype in the Big 12. They're projected 15th in the Big 12 for this season. Um, Craig Smith has been steadily approving this Utah team for his first three seasons, but it kind of a recession is more or less in store this year. Uh, Gabe Madison is the most notable return returner for Utah this year, 14 points per game and four rebounds per game. He's been big for Utah uh, for a while. And then they've got three other players who were big for them uh, returning for this Utes program. Lovering, uh, six points per game, five rebounds a night. Erickson, also five points a game, two assists a night. And Wallen also is returning for Utah. Then you've also got some transfers that are coming in to help this team out as well. you got Dawes, uh, seven points per game and four rebounds a night out of Rice. Uh, Zach Keller, two points per game. Uh, saw limited playing time for Wake Forest last season. And then Mason Madsen at eight points a game out of Boston College. Look, um, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Utah is not the best team in college basketball by any means. Uh, but this is a power level competition and this is a team that i think state should beat but it's still going to be a challenge early in the season yeah you know it's still weird to me i think the only number i'm still hung up on david is you saying number 15th in the big 12 they just really need to fix that because it's <laughs> bugs me. look there's like 18 teams in the big 10 and then like definitely more than 12 teams now in the big 12 so <laughs> yeah it's Nothing makes sense anymore. I don't know who told you things had to make sense yeah, nowadays, but they don't. So, <laughs> Not at all. Anyways, let's move forward. Let's go not for the ACC-SEC challenge, but Mississippi State will face an ACC school. The Bulldogs will head to Dallas to face SMU. You want to talk about conference mess-ups? Like, SMU's in the ACC now. Like... Come on, like, what more do you want on this new landscape of college basketball? Yeah, uh, SMU has got a first-year head coach. And have you not heard SMU getting a new coach this offseason really, really shook things up around specifically the SEC? Um, see, if you don't know what I'm talking about, that's how Cal ended up at Arkansas and Mark Pope is now the head coach at Kentucky. All because SMU decided to hire USC's coach um, for this last off-season cycle. This is a brand new uh, SMU team. They've got a whole new look on this team for uh, Coach Andy Enfield. Uh, a couple of players you need to note. Chuck Harris was one of the bright spots for SMU last season. He's returning 13.4 uh, points per game, 3.2 rebounds, and 3.4 assists a night. Uh, then Kevin Miller is coming off a good season at Wake Forest last year at 15.6 points per game and 2.8 rebounds. He also shot 46.4% from the field and above 36% from three last season, and nearly 85% for the free throw line. And then also Matt Cross is transferring to SMU after playing two seasons at UMass. Uh, he's going to be big for their front court, 15.3 points per game, 8.3 rebounds and 3.0 assists. SMU looks like they could be a team that's capable of winning roughly 17 to 20 games this season and being somewhere in the NCAA tournament conversation. Going on the road, this is probably the best early season test for Mississippi State this year. Yeah, it should be a good one. Definitely a good kind of temperature gauge there for SMU to kind of see what this new team is going to do against, you know, a Power 5 conference team like Mississippi State. So should be a good early matchup. 
But it'll be a busy November for State. They'll head out west to the Arizona tip-off for their MTE after their trip to face off against SMU in Dallas. Yeah, Arizona tip-off time last year was a lot of fun. South Carolina out there facing Grand Canyon was really the matchup. Uh, this is this MTE looks to be getting a little bit better every season. This year it's got Butler, Northwestern, and UNLV also in this uh, field with State. Uh, State's going to get uh, UNLV first game in this one, uh, and then they'll face the winner of either the from the Big East of between Butler and Northwestern uh, in that game. More than likely they'll get the winner. UNLV I don't think is quite there as a team out of the Mountain West to win it. However, Mountain West teams have been getting better and better every season uh, for the last couple of years. This is going to be an opportunity to get some solid wins on a neutral side, and they should all at least bear out to be quad two opportunities uh, out there in Arizona. It's going to be a fun one there in the Cactus Division uh, is what the uh, field is called. Uh, there's also the Desert Division, so don't get confused if you're buying tickets out there in Phoenix. Otherwise, you're going to watch Bowling Green, New Mexico State, Pepperdine, and Weber State. So make sure you're in the right division. Uh, when you get tickets out there, but this was a great feel. This was a great tournament last year, and this should be another fun trip with some great opportunities for Mississippi State to come home with at least one quality win. Definitely. So we've got another ACC SEC matchup, but this is actually for the ACC SEC <laughs> challenge. So this year, Mississippi State will face Pitt in this challenge at home. Yeah, Pitt's one of those teams that's right there on the conversation about being a tournament team this year under coach Jeff Kappel. Um, they had a 21 season last year, 22 and 11 is where they went. They're projected this year to finish, according to Hoop Scoops Media, seventh in the ACC. They're returning seven players to this pit team, uh, and Kuz Leggett at 12 points per game, low 10 points per game, uh, returning to this team as well. And then as well in the front court, they got Zach Austin coming back and then Graham at seven points per game uh, for the Panthers. This looks like a pretty decent pit team, and it's going to be tough matchup for Mississippi State uh, there in the ACC. This is going to be one of the more challenging games. State fans should be happy that this one's going to be in the hump, man. Like this, That should be the thing that helps them out is getting that home court opportunity there in the ACC-SEC Challenge. Chance to take home a W in this one, um, but it's going to be a tough fight. They could easily, they can't fall asleep in this game. It's going to be one of the harder ones to win. Yeah, I think it'll be a good kind of, again, temperature check to kind of see where they're at as we get closer to non-conference being over and into conference. But there's still more games to play before we get to that that time. So Mississippi State will face three mid-majors after this game against Pitt. They'll face Prairie View, A&M, Will Wade and McNeese and Tupelo, and finally Central Michigan in Jackson. Then they'll face Memphis in the FedEx Forum. So in case you haven't heard, Memphis has had some off-the-court issues going on uh, there under Coach Penny Hardaway. Uh, Mississippi State fans definitely very familiar with Rick Stansberry. Uh, got fired this offseason uh, by Coach Hardaway, and he also fired several of his assistant coaches right there in the middle of not time that you normally hire and fire coaches. Uh, a lot of off-the-court drama going on with Memphis this offseason. Uh, they are projected to be the number one team in the American, but the American Conference has been significantly weakening over the last few years. They should be expected to be the number one team in the American, especially now that Florida Atlantic no longer has Dusty May there in that conference to wreak havoc. Um, their Memphis is just returning one player, and that's Nick uh, Jordan. Uh, seven points per game and four rebounds tonight. So this is a very heavy transfer team uh, for Memphis. And one of the big names that, you know, around the SEC, really the Big 12, is Tyrese Hunter um, coming from Texas, 11 points per game and four assists a night. And then also Kobe Rogers out of Wichita State, um, 16 points a game. It's going to be another big name to know on this Memphis team. And P.J. Carter out of Texas, San Antonio, he's going to be returning uh, or he's going to be coming to Memphis this season to fill in on the bench. Um, Memphis is one of those cases right now where it's like we think they're going to be a good team. They look like a tournament team with this being in the forum. This should be a quad two opportunity for Mississippi State. This one's going to be important uh, for State to get a really good point on their resume there on a road trip. If Memphis is in the top 75, this could be a quad opportunity, quad one opportunity there in the net. Yeah, you know, I usually ride super hard for Memphis. I've kind of fallen off since they've fallen to some drama. So we'll see how they shake out this season. Uh, but Mississippi State will wrap up non-conference play with Bethune and Cookman. David, overall, what are your thoughts on the schedule for State? Not bad. 
Not bad. A lot of quad two opportunities, but they got some, some neutral site stuff going on. Um, they've got some outside chances here in this non-conference. There's some quad one wins. If you can get one in the non-conference, that's normally a good sign. This is going to be one of those where I think they can rack up a lot of quad two wins uh, to help that resume, but they may or may not grab a quad one. We'll see how it kind of plays out. Um, this is no by no means the worst. And honestly, I think their schedule is tougher than Ole Miss's. Um, so they're their rival, at least they're scheduling a little bit more difficult. Um, there's definitely opportunities here to find wins and help themselves out uh, a little bit going to some of these trips. And like I said, those neutral sites, they have a whole different setup when you um, when you look at it in the net. So it's only top 50 for a quad one, and then you keep going down. So they've got some chances there with some of those quad, you know, games that are normally quad three or quad four at home for them, maybe to bump up a quad to help them out. So it's not bad. It's not the most difficult, but it's certainly not the worst in the SEC by any means when it comes to quality of opponent. Yeah, I think it's definitely one of those schedules that suits the team. Like we don't have the the schedule for, you know, Arkansas or Alabama that's just <laughs> absolutely outlandish, but you you've got you got some challenges in there, I think enough to kind of get you ready for what to expect in SEC play. I think SMU is probably their best one. That's probably their best game playing that one in Dallas. Uh, should That one might line up to be a quad one opportunity for them if SMU is as good as we think they might end up being. Let's go ahead and go to the SEC schedule. State will get at home Kentucky, Missouri, Florida, Texas A&M, LSU, and Texas. On the road, they'll get Vanderbilt, Auburn, Tennessee, Georgia, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. And then in those home-and-home -home series, they'll get South Carolina, Ole Miss, and Alabama. Maddie, thoughts on the conference schedule for State? This may be the best conference schedule for the team that I've seen. You have a decent number of challenges at home. You have a decent number of challenges away. And your home and home, I feel like, could go either way. You know, with the exception of Alabama. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, I feel like a lot of these SEC schedules are really just terrible either at home or away and I feel like you got a good chance to stack up some good wins in both categories so I think this is going to put Mississippi State in a fantastic position when it comes to tournament time because you're going to get some quality wins you're going to have some losses but I don't think they're going to be terrible losses based off of where where they're played so I think Mississippi State kind of got the the golden egg of SEC conference scheduling. It's balanced. It's balanced. The only way that you can get a more favorable schedule is if you got all your tough games at home and all your uh all your uh you know weaker SEC opponents on the road or something like that. So you know where you get a boost, you know, from the net from playing those teams. Who knows? This is balanced. This is probably the fa most fair one that we've seen. So uh, I, I think this is a good opportunity for Mississippi State. You're right with how well balanced it is. Uh, obviously, Auburn and Tennessee and Arkansas are going to be tough on the road. But Georgia, Oklahoma and Vanderbilt, those are totally different situations on the road than those environments you're going to be heading into. And then at home, you've got LSU, uh, you know, Florida, Missouri. Those are ones you've got a really good chance in. But also Kentucky, Texas A&M. And, um, you know, those... It lines out well. It really does. And then South Carolina and Ole Miss, uh, if you can even go one and one in each of those series, it's really not a bad place to be in your home and a home. So I'm like you. I like the schedule for state uh, overall for their SEC schedule. So let's go ahead and let's turn to the expectations. Maddie, where you got state at? You know, I expect state to have another solid year. I see them sitting at 19 and 12 at the end of the season. I think they are going to be one of those bubble teams just because I don't see as many high caliber opponents in the non-conference. We talked about SMU kind of being the, the best game, best opportunity to possibly get a quad one win there and boost that number when you get into tournament time. But I believe they're going to find the majority of their wins in the non-conference. Obviously, again, due to poor planning, I have Mississippi. I would have Mississippi State a little bit closer, but I have them at 12 in my preseason ranking. Actually, you got them at 13. Because you already gave 12 away. You gave 12 to Missouri. Okay. <laughs> this, Missouri is your, this is your planning that, method right here. It's like... <laughs> it's, there was there was no no method whatsoever. There was no planning. Let's be honest. So, I just, you know, 
<laughs> what happens to me will happen if it becomes a meme then you know good for the channel <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just enjoying it. Hey, look, we're not too far apart. Uh, you know, like maybe there's a bunch of ties down there. We'll see. And they still end up 12th is where they're actually at. I could rewrite your rankings at some point. And it's like this team's also 12 <laughs> and just go through there. But all right. So I've also got state 19 and 12 through this season. I think that number should be somewhere around 19 and a half. I think their ceilings higher than that, though. They could be a team that wins 21 games this year. Uh, the non-conference is overall fair favorable. I think they outclass some of the power conference opponents they have in the non-conference. I can see this team winning 11 games in non-conference this season, somewhere around eight and 10 in conference. That should be very close to tournament, if not in in the tournament as a 10 seed. Uh, they get some quality opponents coming in at home. They should be right in the conversation there in a March. I think State is going to be one of those teams we play close attention to, though, on Selection Sunday if things kind of get a little bit rocky. Um, they're right there, though, in my group. with I have Georgia and South Carolina this season with teams I expect to be right around the bubble, uh, either first four, last four, somewhere in that group uh, for teams who are going to be in that it's tournament time. Let's find out who you are and what the committee has got to say about you. So it's going to be a tough year. I do like State's chances of making the NCAA tournament for a three-peat this season with or without to Tolu Smith. All right, guys, if you have not already, please like and subscribe to the Hoop Southbound Show. We greatly appreciate having you guys here. Uh, if you could also tell us how you think Mississippi State's going to do. I know State fans are very excited about this season, and I know every projection out there, you guys have had something to say about it. And we're riding around the ballpark where uh, everyone else kind of has State. So I'm happy to hear your messaging right now with how you feel Mississippi State's going to do this season. Also, check out our episode of The Portal. You guys actually, this is probably our number one video we've ever done for Mississippi State. Uh, we went through the entire transfer class uh, for Mississippi State and looked at each player in their game, uh, broke that down for you guys, and you guys were very responsive for that one. So if you haven't checked it out yet, please do. Um, but like I said, please like and subscribe to the channel, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks, guys. Have a great week.